In this series on the management of diabetes, we're now going to talk about oral hypoglycemics uh, that include the sulfonylurea drugs, thiazolidine dions, and the sodium glucose uh, transporter inhibitors that are primarily being applied to CAT, which is, uh, has a similarity uh, to human type 2 diabetes because it's uh, largely uh, caused by insulin resistance. And when we talk about oral medications in cats, uh, everybody thinks it's thought it was a great idea to have an alternative to give an insulin injection to a cat, but I think we have to be reminded by how um, unhappy cats can be about getting pilled. So to preview uh, what we'll discuss about oral medications, I want to break them down into four groups. We'll really only talk about three. The first are the types of drugs that stimulate the pancreas to make more insulin. And the example we'll, we'll talk about is sulfonylureas, like glipizide. Then there are drugs that will increase the sensitivity of the body to insulin and also suppress hepatic glucose production. That's actually part of the sensitivity. And the, the two drug uh, classes here that have been used in the CAT again are biguanides and thiazolidine dions. Uh, although they've been tried, the, the drugs that are uh, designed to slow the absorption of starches, such as alpha glucosidase inhibitors, have not really caught on in uh, veterinary medicine. And the final one, which is a newer class of drugs, at least as far as it's being approved, uh, and it turns out to be the only drug class that is approved for cats and diabetes, is are those that inhibit the renal glucose reabsorption, the so-called sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitors, uh, type 2. And so these are the four class. We'll talk about one, two, and four uh, as we go forward. So as I mentioned, the oral treatment options for the diabetic cat, really the bottom line today, uh, those drugs that are being used are primarily the uh, sulfonylureas like lipizide and now the uh, SGLT2 inhibitors. In fact, as I said, they're the only FDA approved products. With some experience with the thiazolidine dions, uh, darglitazone, a pioglitazone primarily uh, in the cat. In order to understand the pathophysiology and appropriate treatment for diabetes in the cat, this is a normal islet from a cat. And uh, we're going to compare this uh, picture where you see very distinct uh, islets, such as this white area here, um, with beta cells and other cells within it, very visible, compared to here, where, no, this hasn't been washed out. This is basically beta cell, or the islet, I should say, uh, completely replaced or largely replaced by amyloid. And it's this amyloid that develops over time, particularly as there is an attempt to make more and more insulin in response to insulin resistance. Uh, so is also amyloid, amylin being secreted in an equimolar fashion. So the strategy to get the beta cells to produce more insulin tends to be counterproductive in that it causes more uh, amyloid deposition and uh, re ends up causing the animal essentially being an insulin-dependent diabetic, which there tend to be even type 2 diabetes, what we call type 2 diabetes in the cat, those cats are over time heading towards an insulin dependent condition. And so, as a graphical way to show what's going on here, you can see that in um, this is a study by Hoenig in uh, 2002, where the, the animal who that is lean is, is producing this much amylin. Uh, and this is the obese animal producing much more amylin, indicating the increased secretion of amylin and insulin. 
in an attempt to maintain normal glycemia. So let's first take a look at the uh, sulfonylurea drugs and specifically glipizide. Well, how do they work? Well, the beta cell um, basically has a sulfonylurea receptor on the surface that's a, uh, linked to an ATP dependent potassium channel. Uh, which depolarizes the beta cell and leads to the calcium influx and secretion of, as we mentioned, insulin and amylin. And so basically these drugs uh, are stimulating the additional release of insulin to the extent that they can. And we'll see that to the extent that they're effective will depend largely upon whether the animal has an additional insulin secretion capacity. So the drug that's been tried here is uh, glipizide, uh, and it's two and a half to five milligrams, uh, two to three times a day in a cat. Um, the, one of the downsides are the adverse effects of vomiting, potential for hypoglycemia, and also the increased uh, liver enzymes. Another drug in this class, uh, gliburide or diabeta or micronase, uh, has, there's less experience with this, uh, but the dose that had been given was to give 0.625 milligrams once a day to a cat, adjust the dose based on response and adverse effects, which are similar. Uh, as I said, there's only a little bit of experience with this drug. Again, both of these drugs, glipizide and gliburide, are only approved in humans and are used in an extra label fashion in cats.